What's going on, arcade nerds? In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to convert a Macintosh Plus into a vector monitor. And it has a screen at least. Oh, it's working. Very good. I should have enough room to be able to squeeze all the new electronics inside it. I think. I got two screws down here. Ah, shit. Screwdriver is not long enough. Hey, if it's stupid and it works, it ain't really stupid, is it? Is there not a screw in there? Okay. One screw came out. Okay, so we definitely got to take this out. Oh, looks like we're going to have lots of room. Lots and lots of room. I'm going to leave this entire board here and hot wire it. Okay, and <clears throat> I could rewind this yoke. Hmm, I, you know what? I'll either rewind this yoke, but I think I might have a pre-wound yoke already this size. So if I, if I can find it, I'll go ahead and swap it out. Now, the power supply is also built into this, so I could even steal power from this. I'll have to test the pins. Maybe I'll have the correct voltages already on this board to run an XY monitor. If so, that would be great, but I kind of doubt it. I probably have plus 5, minus 5, and 12, or something like that, but who knows? Maybe I could tap into plus 12, negative 12, you know? But this got to go. Can go in the trash. Now, it's been a while since I opened up the Mac. I believe these have 4164 RAM chips inside, which I could probably use for arcade machines. 
And if there's any ROMs, I'll go ahead and reuse those for arcade machines, you know. Oh, yeah, I'll take that processor. Oh, that's right, this has 30-pin SIMs in it for the RAM. But I will, I will scavenge that processor for sure. Uh, okay, so this is all this is. Oh, I should mention... Uh, if you if you have never torn apart anything electronic before, uh, don't. <laughs> um, there are voltages inside electronics that could potentially electrocute you, so be careful with that and so forth. You know, I have a I have a change of plans. <clears throat> I I put the other one back together. And I got this one, which is a way nicer machine. Uh, yeah, sure, it may have some yellowing, but I kind of felt bad about ruining it. So I, I, I don't want to ruin it. This one, this one, I want to do. I want to leave this completely intact and functional, but I plan to put additional ve vector circuitry inside this, so it, so it can easily be reversed. So now I'm going to figure out how I can do this and reverse so I can still use it as a Macintosh, but still have that vector goodness. Okay, let me explain the first thing I'm, first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to hijack the gun circuit, okay? Now the gun can be accessed through pin 2 according to Vectrex schematics. Why am I looking at Vectrex schematics? because it uses the exact same um, a compatible tube, okay? So, pin 2 is this yellow wire right here. So let me cut that. Okay, the yellow wire is now cut. So, what are we going to do with it? <clears throat> well, we need to be able to control it. Uh, let me move this out of the way. Okay, so, we get a piece of paper and I'm going to explain what we're going to do. What I'm going to do is build a Darlington circuit and a Darlington circuit is nothing more than one transistor controlling a second transistor and the reason you would want to control one transistor with a second transistor, after all they're both a switch, is to get additional current. Okay, This way I can play, kind of play it safe and know I have a little more current. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a picture of a transistor. And I'm going to draw a picture of another transistor. Now, this transistor is going to the base of another transistor. And this transistor is connecting to this transistor. And <clears throat> right here is going to be our positive voltage. What we want to do is we want that yellow wire to have a positive voltage. Okay? It doesn't need to be much. It just needs to make sure that the, that, that, that the wire, as long as this wire going to the gun, as long as that wire going to the gun is not grounded out, then the beam will not turn on. Okay, uh, and so to make sure it, it, it is not grounded out, we're going to put a voltage to this area. And I'm going to put a resistor right here. Okay, and let's put, uh, let's say, 12 volt. 12 volts going to come in here, and we're going to put a large resistor, let's say, 10K. Okay, now <clears throat> the reason there's a resistor here is because this circuit is going to ground out, okay? When these transistors are active, or saturated, or whatever, they're going to ground this gun. Well, the gun's connected to 12 volts, we can't ground out our 12 volt power supply. So, this resistor is here, so it can safely be grounded out, okay? Anyways, so this transistor is going to a ground, okay? When this transistor is active, it will also activate this transistor. And remember how I said transistors are a switch? What it's going to do is it's going to connect this wire to this wire. 
it, it, as an easy way of saying it, okay, uh, a, a simplified way of saying it, it's basically going to switch this wire to here. So this transistor and this transistor are basically a switch, okay? Now let me get that out so it doesn't confuse you. <laughs> okay, so now <clears throat> we need to make sure that we can adjust our input going into this because um, the saturation point might be different, you know, and we might, maybe, you might want to tune it in to figure out the brightness control, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a potentiometer, okay? And our input, our Z input is going to come in here, okay? Now this is a potentiometer, you know, the knob, the volume control you turn on your stereo. <clears throat> and let's go with, oh, let's do a 10K here. 10K variable resistor. And this is going to go down to another resistor. And that's going to go to ground. Okay, so let's call this resistor a 1K. Okay, now <clears throat> the reason, see, we want to make sure that this base is grounded because we don't want it to turn on by itself. Okay, so it's going to go through this, the ground, you know, it's going to go through this resistor and through this resistor so this can be grounded. But the reason I have 1K resistor here is if you were to turn this potentiometer all the way one way, it would create a dead short. Well, we don't want to short out our Z input, so that's why there's a 1K resistor here. So, once we turn this knob, we will adjust uh, how much... I'm trying to keep this as oversimplified as possible. <laughs> we're, we're going to adjust uh, how, how much this trans transistor turns on, which will affect how much this transistor turns on. And this is what's called a Darlington uh, circuit. Um, so, let me build this circuit. Oh, you know what? Let, let's, let's see here. This could be a... 2N2222, and this could be a tip 31. And just because I'm going to use these exact parts, all the exact values, and we'll see if it works. And if it doesn't work, I'll tell you, you know, what's going on and what I changed. But this, this should work. So let's build it. Okay, so now the circuit is built. Um, I, I didn't have a couple of the correct resistor sizes, and so I substituted, you know, for example, I added two resistors together to uh, create different values and so on. Anyways, this is basically the exact same thing. I did end up using a 3904 instead of the 2N2222, but that doesn't matter. Uh, also, I, you, you can go either way. Also, I had 50K pots handy, so I used 50K pot. That doesn't matter. Uh, let me explain real quickly explain why okay I'm going to talk about a voltage divider let's say you have plus 5 volts and you have a ground and you want to get 2.5 volts how do you get it well your wire is going to come in here you're going to have, let's say, a 100 ohm resistor and another 100 ohm resistor. Okay. If you were to get your meter and if you were to test this point right here to ground, between here and here, you will get 2.5 volts. See, in the circuit, you have 5 volts being used, okay? And, and you, you see, you, you can, you can, you, the 5 volts will go across this entire circuit, okay? There will be a voltage drop between this resistor and this resistor. Since these are both the exact same size resistor, you can, you, this is, you know, long story short, this is what's called a voltage divider. And this potentiometer, which is not the same size I mentioned earlier, doesn't matter because we're looking for a voltage we can move that wiper to move the voltage divider all over the place until we find 
the sweet spot, the spot we want. But okay, so what I'm going to do now is, see, <clears throat> we have our circuit, right? This little circuit that we built, okay? Well, remember how it uses 12 volts? We have a ground here. Well, we need a power supply now. And so, so let's build a power supply. Um, also, keep in mind, I need to make a power supply beefy enough to handle a, uh, a deflection board. So I need probably, I don't know, let's say one and a half amps per side. Uh, so what do we do here? Well, I'm going to use a transformer. It's a center tap transformer. Now, the symbol for transformer is this. Okay, now in here on these two these two wires, this is called your primary winding because it's the winding we're starting our voltage with, is 120 or so volts AC. Okay. Now the difference between AC, well, I'll, you know, I'm going to come into that. In and uh, our output is going to be, oh, let's say if, if you measure it from the center, let's say 24. 24 volts. Okay. Now, uh, remember our voltage divider? This is kind of like our inductance divider, I guess you could say. See, there's a certain amount of windings right here in this transformer. And the more windings, the higher your voltage is going to be. The less windings, the lower your voltage is going to be. Well, between 24 volts, half our windings will be 12 volts. So if we were to use the center tap as a ground, this becomes 12 volts, and this becomes 12 volts. AC, of course. Okay, but if you were to measure it, so if you had your meter, and you measured it from here to here, you'll get 24 volts. But if you had your meter and you measured it from here to here, or here to here, you'll now have 12 volts. Well, this is AC current, and we need DC current, okay? Um, <clears throat> the difference is, if let's say you have a wire, and with AC current, current will flow back and forth, okay? And if you were to look at it on an oscilloscope, you would see something like this, okay? And when I said when I said the wire is going, see, let's say over here is the positive side and right here is the negative side. Well, when your wire is going, when your power is flowing back and forth, it's going positive, negative, positive, negative. What we want is we want a smooth, clean, flat line of power. No, no wavering, okay? And so I'm going to build a full wave rectifier and um, and let me explain how it works. Um, Give me another piece of paper. Before I do that, let me explain diodes. Okay, we have ourselves a diode. In my case, I'm using a, uh, what is this, 404? 2N4004 diode. That's, I believe that's a 1 amp diode. Now, uh, with a diode, it will allow voltage to flow one way, but not the other. Okay? So, um, if we were to put our AC current, AC here, and out would come a pulsating, pulsating DC current. Okay, so remember how we have our thing right here? Well, if you have a diode, you're only going to get one half. So you have pulses, pulse, 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 pulse. Well, we can use this if we use a large capacitor to hold the charge and to hold the charge and st to store some of this charge to kind of go in here. It would it would look something, you know, like that if we had a capacitor. We can fix it somewhat, and if you have a big enough capacitor, you could probably get a straight flat line. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a circuit that's going to use this pulse and this pulse and put them together. So, in other words, our new wave will be something like that. Okay? And that'll be way easier to filter than a rough, rough pulse. Okay? So, 
What I'm going to do is, remember our transformer. Where did I have the transformer? I already messed up the paper. Okay, so we have our... Here's our center tap on the transformer. And we're going we're gonna to come in and I'm going to get... diodes like this. I'm going to draw a little diamond here. And we're going to put our diodes... Okay, now um, our AC is going to come in here. Okay, now kind of imagine this. Pretend these are arrows, okay? See how this arrow is kind of pointing this direction, and this arrow is kind of pointing this direction, and this arrow is kind of pointing this direction, this kind of arrow is pointing this direction. Well, think, think about it this way. All arrows point to the positive side, okay? and all arrows point away from the negative side. Okay? So what this circuit is doing is when AC comes in it can either go this way or this way. And either way will, will, uh, will, it, voltage will be allowed to go through. Okay? And it's kind of like sorting those waves and putting them in order for us to be used for DC, if that kind of makes sense. I'm kind of oversimplifying this. I, you know, I'm trying to make this simple, so in case any of you guys don't know these basics, maybe you guys can understand it in this video. But okay, so we have that. Now, if we get our center tap, if we measure our voltage, we'll now have a little over 12 volts now. Okay? Um, because, the, um, you know, I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me sit down. Okay, I'll go into it. There's something called root means square. You know what? Don't worry about it. We're going to keep this simple. Okay. So, now that we have this, each voltage is going to be a pulse. Somewhat of a pulse. Okay. Well, how do we fix that pulse? Well... We're going to put a capacitor across our ground to our negative. And we're going to put a, another capacitor across this ground to the negative. And so now, with these capacitors, we'll have a smooth voltage. So, the schematic I'm going to build is really simple. Super basic. Okay, so now we have this. Our transformer our rectifier circuit, and two capacitors. Now, <clears throat> I went ahead and I put uh, three capacitors, or three uh, rec uh, diodes in a row to triple the, the amount of current it can handle because I'm not sure what I'm going to possibly add to this later in the future. Um, it would be best if I used a bigger diode, but this will work just fine. It's done commonly on electronics. Okay, so we have this. Now we can power this, which I think I'll possibly mount right here and that is also going to power my deflection board now if you don't have a deflection board a schematic like this should work okay I mounted this board to, to this board and what I did is I used, used a couple risers I soldered it to this side, soldered it to the bottom side so now it's nice and solid and I also connected my positive voltage here, my negative voltage here on the 15 volt side. By the way, this is when this is running, it's measured at 15 volts. Well, I want to be able to keep this cool, okay? And so I'm I'm, I'm planning on using a um, a PC fan, okay? <clears throat> now, you can put 15 volts to a PC fan, but it's really not designed to run at 15 volts. It's designed to run at 12 volts. So I'm going to put a 12 volt regulator on on this. Okay, let me explain a regulator. This is really simple. Okay, the schematic for regulators usually is a box. Okay, and usually this side is your input. This side is your output. And the bottom pin here is your ground. Okay. Now, the way a regulator works is it uses a zener diode and a resistor inside it. But what it does is <clears throat> it, 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 it has the input, it senses the ground, 
and then it, it, it shorts out some of the voltage until, well it slightly shorts it out until it becomes whatever the, the regulator is rated at. So a 7812 is, is the regulator I'm going to use and it's rated at 1 amp um, but the PC fan is probably going to be, you know, I don't know, 30 milliamps or something like that. So we'll be, pl we'll, be, we'll be plenty good. I won't even need a heat sink. Okay, so here's my 12 volt regulator and it's connected directly to a fan. Somewhere I'll find a spot to put this in the, in the machine. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so I have my goofy little board down here. I used, uh, I cheated. And I did it a hacky way. I put some double-sided tape to hold that down, but it's very, very strong. Um, it's I got some super, super strong uh, double-sided tape on there. But okay, so everything's hooked up now. My uh, one wire going to the gun is going to the gun. Uh, I tapped into the ground, which is the orange wire. Maybe I could zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. The orange wire going to the third pin from the left. I tapped into my ground. That way both this power supply and the monitor share the same ground. So that's grounded. Uh, also, I, oh, I drilled a hole right here. I actually made an existing hole bigger. And I soldered a wire right to here. And down here. Now let me zoom in in case in case anyone wants to do this themselves. Okay, right there and right there. Okay. And so what that'll do is it'll run my transformer at the same time this power switch is switched, the original power switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a, a test. I don't even know if this circuit works. I just assume it's going to work. I'm pretty sure it's going to work, you know. But, so let's test it out. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to get my Z wire, and I'm going to touch 15 volt, okay, which is right here, okay. And now I have an adjustment to adjust for proper voltage. The 15 volt should saturate the transistors, which means turn them all the way on. And uh, we should get a dot in the screen. By the way, I unplugged the yoke, the yoke cable. Uh, now with some now with some monitors, they require a yoke connected because the flyback circuit is 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 uh, is part of the yoke winding. If that makes sense, it's the inductor for it. Uh, and other other monitors, uh, there it is not. And luckily, this is one of those monitors that it drives the flyback separately from the yoke. So that's not necessary in this situation. I can unplug the yoke and still get a picture. So let's plug this thing in. And let me turn it. Okay. So it turned on. Our cooling fan is spinning. Remember that 12 volt regulator? Okay, so now I'm going to ground out the gun. Well, you know, give power by grounding it out, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, we got a dot in the screen. So now, that means we have a working Z amplifier. So now, oh yeah, I can actually touch it. It's enough to, so it's really sensitive, just me touching it's enough. So I can adjust it, it's no big deal. But yeah, so that's what that potentiometer is for. It's to uh, calibrate the, the gun sensitivity. Okay, so, Let's get my deflection board mounted somewhere, and I'll go ahead and wire it up. Okay, so now my fan is mounted. Uh, everything's wired up. My, I'm using a uh, Vectrex yoke. It's much easier than just winding another one, and I had a spare one anyways. So <clears throat> Vectrex yoke is now connected. Um, that's now connected. Um, and I'm going to hook it up to my phone, and I'm going to play oscilloscope music to see the see to test it but <clears throat> before I do that let me go over this okay so now we have a working Z 
Now we have a working deflection board. Now we have a working power supply. Um, and I already know the deflection board works. But anyways, but we do not have what Atari calls a spot killer. So, let me find a piece of paper. Let's make one from scratch. Okay. What I'm going to do, get this crap out of the way. Now I got a pen. What I'm going to do is, un under normal operation, the deflection coil is moving, correct? I mean, it is being powered, correct? So what I'm going to do is, the deflection coil has a three wires. It's there's four wires, but it's basically three. What it really is is a ground, an X, and a Y. Okay. And so what we're going to do is, I'm going to sense the, the X and or the Y for an input. Okay, so we have our X coming in. I'm going to put a diode here. We're going to have the Y coming in. It's going to be a, a diode here. Okay, now I'm going to connect these together. Okay. So, if X or Y is ever doing anything at all, we will have a voltage here, okay? Now, I'm going to drive the base of a transistor, and the most this could put out is 15 volts minus, minus the 0.6 voltage drop from the diodes, right? So, <clears throat> the voltage is really too high to run a transistor base. So, instead, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put a resistor here, and I'm going to take a guess, and let's say 6K, okay? Now, I'm going to charge a capacitor. That's going to go to ground, okay? This ground is the same as that ground, okay? Now, so let's call this 22 microfarad, okay? So, as long as something is happening, this capacitor will be charged. But, at some point, if something does not happen, we need this capacitor to discharge. So, what I'm going to add to the circuit is my 50K pots that I have. i got a whole bunch of them, so I'm going to use them up. Okay? This is going to be a 50K potentiometer. So, depending how I adjust this potentiometer, it will change its resistance and make this capacitor discharge at different rates, depending how I have it adjusted. Okay, now we're going to go to a transistor. We're going to control the base of a transistor. And let's go with the, the uh, 2N3904 again. What the hell? Okay. And, <clears throat> okay... Let's see here. I got. I got to think for a second. Normally, yeah. Okay. So our our Z is going to yeah. Our Z is going to come in here and come out here. Does that make sense? So what what's what's happening is if there is a voltage on, on this base, it's going to activate this transistor. And when this transistor is active, it's going to allow voltage to go through, okay? And if, uh, and if this uh, capacitor discharges, which it will at some point if, there is no, if there's no deflection, it will turn off the transistor. So let's build this circuit and see if it works. Boom! Okay, so what I did is I, uh, I have my... My little pins that I soldered here for the deflection coil. And I'm just going to solder this onto that like it's a little module. And let's test it out. Okay, uh, I closed the case. Also, I added a 3.5 millimeter audio jack to the uh, inputs of the uh, deflection amplifier. And I added two speakers, two 8 ohm speakers to the back of the case. And I added a um, 1 watt. Uh, 10 ohm resistor in line with each uh, speaker. So, for the rest of this video, let's uh, 
Let's let's watch some oscilloscope music. If you want to know how to find this oscilloscope music, go on YouTube and check out Geraldine Fenderson. Uh, and he makes all kinds of us stuff, and it's free. So get your phone, put it on YouTube, play a video, and connect it to your scope. Yeah. <laughs> 